Welcome to Realtor Reels with Raval Philly Group. Each episode, we speak to the greatest real estate agents in the country and hear their real stories that they have encountered while selling homes. What you are about to hear may just shock you. Hi, everyone. How are you? My name is Brett Rosenthal. I am a realtor in the Philadelphia area. I cover Philadelphia and the surrounding suburbs. And we're back for another episode of Realtor Reels with an agent who's actually licensed, well, she'll tell you, in a few states. Her name is Dana DiMarino, and she's a new agent with Compass. She's not a new agent, but she's new with Compass. And um, I'm going let to let her tell you a little about herself. And then we're both going to tell you a story of things that you wouldn't expect a normal realtor to deal with, but that we actually, it's happened to us. So I'm going to let Dane introduce herself. Hi, everyone. Thank you for having me, Brett. I'm very excited to be here. (laughs) Um, As you already said, I am a new agent with Compass as of the last few days. I recently switched over. Um, I have been licensed, though, since 2018 or 19, I believe. Um, Anyway, so... I'm very excited to be part of Compass. Um, I'm, you know, anxious to see what I can do with Compass. Um, But I'm in the Pittsburgh area and I'm also licensed in California. And but I'm currently living about 75 percent of my time in Florida. So if you're looking for any real estate in Florida, here I am. (laughs) Um, But so I still do a lot of business in Pittsburgh. Um, And yeah, like you said, there's some interesting stories that um, as agents, we really kind of, people don't really see it. Everybody thinks that as agents, it's all glitz and glamour and, you know, the HGTV kind of thing, but it's not. (laughs) So um, that's what we're here to talk about today. Yeah. So I'll tell my first story since it just happened two days ago and um Kind of reminded me of a TV episode, but not HGTV. It was, if you've ever watched Curb Your Enthusiasm, it was like, Larry kind of exactly <laughs> like that. I got to leave um, somebody thinking about selling his house in Philadelphia and spoke to him on the phone and he said, come tomorrow. So I went to the house. Um, he didn't seem like he was wanting to sell. He just wanted to get like a price of the house. Um, when I spoke to him on the phone, when I came to his house, I told him I was coming about an hour before and I got there and he was in um, a t-shirt and boxer shorts <laughs> and, he, <laughs> and he was cooking breakfast. It smelled really good. And he was just like, I knew him for 30 did he years. Know what time, did he know, like, he yeah. obviously knew what time you were coming. Yeah. And it wasn't like nine in the morning. I think it was like 1130, um, but he just didn't care. So <laughs> His breakfast was cooking as he was giving me a tour of his house and uh, went back downstairs after the tour of the upstairs and just started telling me story after story. The reason I said Kirk Grant Thuzan, he reminded me of the character Leon, who's a character in there. He looked like him. I don't know if I remember Leon. Which one was Leon? He's the one that like lives in his house, but he doesn't pay rent and he's really Okay, I do remember. Yep curses a lot and stuff like that so it was kind of like that looked like him acted like him and he proceeded to tell me that he's married but he has four girlfriends in the Dominican Republic and his goal is to sell the house and move to the Dominican Republic so is he bringing his wife with him no it sounded like he's trying to get divorced from the wife she doesn't actually live in the house um I I didn't really get the whole story but it sounds like he's trying to get divorced at least on in the in America um but in the Dominican Republic he has four girlfriends he kept bringing them up and then as he actually did want to sell the house so we started doing the paperwork to sign the house and he made me FaceTime with one of the four girlfriends in the Dominican Republic to prove that he's selling his house and she seemed happy but It was definitely clearly there's not a lot of trust in this relationship. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen when he gets to the Dominican Republic, but he's selling the house though. So that's okay for my purposes, but it was definitely, I was wishing I like recorded it because it was pretty fun. Yeah. (laughs) 
It's like, wow, now I'm, and that's what people don't realize too, is, you know, it's not just about us selling houses. You actually are completely like intertwined in people's entire personal lives. You become a therapist, you become, um, like a partner in crime, almost like if they need to commit a crime, like you kind of are almost there with them, helping them through that. (laughs) Um, and so it's, you know, that's kind of how that goes. You know, you're now, you're an accomplice to his divorce, to (laughs) convincing his girlfriend that he doesn't have seven other girlfriends. Um, better be careful. Those Dominican Republic women, (laughs) she's going to blame it on you. Yeah, it was a first. So that's my story. Your turn. So I'm not a very good storyteller. I'm actually um, very awkward, but um, I'm going to do it anyways. So um, this was probably maybe two years ago. Um, This story sticks out to me specifically because it um, was not just funny. I guess it's funny now looking back on it, but at the time it was kind of like, my gosh, what did I just get myself into kind of a situation? Um, But I was helping um, an investor, a client of mine that's an investor, um, purchase a 12 unit building. And the deal went through, everything was fine. About two months later, I had gone with him to the property. Um, He was using a property management company and it was section eight. And um, the while we were there going through it to see with the property management company, if there was anything, you know, that needed to be updated, make sure that things were looking good, um, electrical, all that stuff. We were going through everything. Um, a group of people, about two or three people came to the front and they were the representatives for one of the um, the tenants. Um, they were the ones that handled that specific tenants, um, section eight. And we started talking to them and they were like, you know, well, you guys might want to stay outside because we have to go deal with this client. We're like, what are you talking about? Like, what do you mean by deal with this client or this tenant? And, um, they said, well, apparently he's in there. Um, like he has a number one, he hasn't like, I guess he, they have to check in for certain, like, I, I guess he was, you know, recovering rehabilitated drug addict. And, um, he hadn't called them in a while, but apparently they were getting complaints that there were prostitutes in and out of his unit. So, and apparently he like had a gun and was threatening people and out of the window <laughs> all of these things. So I'm like, oh gosh, like forgot to strap up today. (laughs) What am I going to (laughs) do? And, um, and so I'm like, okay, well, here's me, a little Italian girl, you know, we have, I'm, I'm five one, but my mentality is I'm like a six, eight, 250 pound man with extreme muscles. And so I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to come in there with you and I'm going to, I just want to see what's going on and da, 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 da. They looked at me and they were like, honey, you got to sit this one out. (laughs) You got to stay back here. So all of a sudden, so they go in, we hear pounding, pounding. I forget the tenant's name, but um, he finally opened up the door. They said they walked in there and it smelled like a dead body in there. And um, so I'm waiting outside and all of a sudden a truck comes up with somebody in the, obviously driver, and then um, a lady in the passenger seat. She gets out and she starts to walk into the building and goes directly towards his unit. And we obviously knew what was going on with that because then as soon as she saw them, she turned around and walked right back out and got back in the truck. So I look at my client and I'm just like, well, hope you're happy with your purchase, but here we are. So, but um, they ended up getting him out and putting him in like a different, I guess, you know, halfway house kind of a situation but you know that was that was kind of it for me and I just looked at my client and I'm just like you know I think from this point moving forward any investment properties that you purchase um 
I might just FaceTime you while you do your like walkthroughs every couple months instead of go with you. Um, so yeah, that was kind of my story and my, my moment of fear, but my, you know, anxiety, but we made it out alive and all is well in that 12 unit now. So <laughs> was that in Pittsburgh or it was actually in Kansas city. Okay. Yeah. On the Missouri side. So, um, yeah, I work with, um, a couple agents in Kansas city. I have a lot of investors. We have investors that go back and forth between Pittsburgh and Kansas city and, um, a couple other places, but, um, so I, yeah. And, and, you know, I'm in a city that I don't like, I don't have a house there, you know, I don't have a car, nothing. So I'm kind of, you know, on my own try, you know, like what if something happens right now? And, but, you know, looking back now we laugh about it. We survived. <laughs> yep. We survived, but it was, it was fun, I guess, you know, <laughs> yeah, I think I've had a couple, not quite that extreme, but like similar type weird ones where I shouldn't have walked in the house. And But you did. Yeah, I did anyway. But <laughs> um, yeah, so that was good. That was a good one. Um, tell everybody about you, how they could contact you. Sure. Um, so again, my name is Dana DiMarino. Uh, you can contact me. Um, you can email me. Uh, my email is dmarinodn at gmail.com, uh, D-E-M-A-R-I-N-O-D-N at gmail.com. I also have my compass email, which now is Dana dot, Dana spelled D-A-N-A. So Dana dot dmarino at compass.com. My Instagram, I would love for you all to follow me. That's probably the best way to get a hold of me by direct message. Um, that is underscore Dana do so underscore D A N A D O O. Um, and my cell phone, should I put my cell phone out there? I'm not sure yeah. if that's the normal thing to do or not. I Maybe guess you can Google calls, it. But... Um, my cell phone number is 818-963-3142. If you're going to use my cell phone number, I would suggest texting me. Um, if I see random numbers, I try to answer them, but sometimes it says spam, so I don't like to answer those ones. Um, but those are the best ways to contact me. Um, I'm really looking at um, milking the Florida real estate business um, more frequently than the other territories that I'm licensed in. So if you know anybody in Florida, I would love to be the agent, help you guys out. I work with investors. I work with first-time home buyers. Um, even if you're not a first-time home buyer, I am, I'm ready to work. So. Great. Sounds good. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to put all her contact info in the description also. So feel free to reach out if you're looking for a house in Florida. And um, thank you so much. This um, was great. I mean, I know it was short, but. Um, no, it's perfect. Perfect. And if fun. anyone else is like looking to tell a crazy story about real estate, reach out to me and I would love to speak to you. Um, thank you and uh, have a good day. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Nice talking to you. Happy St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> okay, thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.